There we go. Cool. Hello, everyone. I am Liz Imperiali, the founder of Bucket List Entertainment, and I'm here today with Joe Rowland of Paul Bearer. Hi, Joe. Hey. So first of all, the big question, um, how are you doing with this crazy, <laughs> the crazy world right now? How is everything going with you? Uh, I honestly don't even know from like minute to minute. So I feel like Sometimes I feel like totally normal and then like pretty much just like by the next hour I'm having like an existential crisis. So oh yeah, it's, and I, oh. I think that's like true for most people or right? like at least everybody that I've talked to in the recent past, it seems like that's like a, a pretty like familiar feeling. So, Oh my God, is it ever, but I mean, at least at the same time, we, we get to appreciate the now and as much as we can and day by day things a little bit more as opposed to plan too far ahead because we have no choice right now. We have to wait yeah. for things to, to happen before we can move forward. So, totally. yeah, but the existential crisis, I fully relate. Like, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so the big another thing that forgotten days has been around now for for quite a while it's been it's been about since october so we're, we're almost reaching the half the half year mark um how has life been since the release of the album like like because it's 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 been released during a pandemic like is there a difference like how how are things going with the release of this album it's so hard to say i mean like without the ability to actually do anything other than just do online promotion for the record like that's never really been our bag so to speak i mean it's we've always been a band that's like been all about the live aspect mostly and so like just to have that kind of non-existent right now like it sort of seems like the album was sort of like released into the ether <laughs> and you know we did our uh our sort of mandatory like 30 different like zoom interviews about like the making of the record and stuff. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know. It's, it just kind of, it's everything sort of feels like we're in some sort of like weird purgatory right now. I I'm hoping that, uh, we have some live dates scheduled in Europe towards the end of the year. And I'm feeling like cautiously optimistic about that actually being a reality. So I'm just kind of like, bracing myself for the the mm -hmm. return of things to like hopefully start being more like what we're used to in Paul Bearer where like we're able to connect with people mm -hmm. through the the performance I mean I, to me like a lot of times the albums and like songs that we write like don't really like reach their final form until we actually are out there playing it like the the mm. album is one thing that like the the, the like, sort of right. yeah the the way yeah. that it like sort of like transmutes from this sort of like i guess like artifact that's been set in stone like an audio artifact into something that we're like constantly kind of like sculpting and letting evolve live like that's that's right. sort of like the ultimate form so like just that having that be non-existent right now i'm kind of like well we put out an album at kind of doesn't seem like we did because <laughs> we haven't, yeah, yeah. I mean, we haven't gotten to we've, we've never even got to play any of the songs so i mean it's just kind of oh, like oh that's kind of sad yeah yeah i mean even, we didn't play any of the stuff before we recorded it so i mean it just i don't know yeah it's this like weird like alternate reality mm -hmm. on top of everything else right now you know i mean yeah. like, obviously i know that everybody out there is experiencing something that feels like a huge shift from normalcy oh but, yeah you know mm -hmm. take that and also the fact that like you know that's been such a huge component of our lives as artists like we, we've been a like a very like heavy touring unit for a long time so having that gone right now is just like kind of at least for me it's like kind of like really kind of like a head spinner i think yeah and you guys are you guys are a fantastic live performance to watch because it's very you know you get lost in it so i can understand like you want to you must be dying to play those songs and yeah. 
you haven't played any new material before the pandemic, like a sneak in a new song. Nothing was like like set in stone written at that time, like in your last tour. Uh, no, we uh, we ended up kind of like jamming on like some bits of one of the songs. Okay, but I, we we didn't really tour in 2019. We did we did a handful of shows, right. uh, and they were kind of centered more around us playing Sorrow and Extinction. So, okay. yeah, we. Yeah. I'm trying to remember like, the last time I saw you guys because it was because like you said, everything is kind of a blur right now. And I I go to a lot of shows. Uh, so I think it was in because I'm in Montreal and I think it was uh, 20. I think it was 2019 when I saw you guys. Uh, no, the last time we, the last time we played in, uh, hmm. in Montreal would have been, I think, in 2018 with Tribulation. And you played at Cafe Campus from what I remember. Yeah, yeah that's that right. That was the first wow. show of our tour that we did with Tribulation. Oh my god, that was so long ago. Wow. Yeah, that, that seems <laughs> like a lifetime ago. <laughs> seems like another life. A completely yeah. different lifetime. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, so this this album, Forgotten Days, um, it's it's known to be the the most personal album that you've that you've released. Um, you know, written about dealing with death, you know, mistakes made. Um all kinds of really personal things. So um, did you find it difficult discussing in depth these things over and over again since the release? Like, in, like, did you, did you, um, were you mentally prepared for this? Like for these interviews? Because, because people really like, you know, picked your brain on it. So yeah. I think, I think in like had last year not happened and there, there hadn't been essentially being locked down for so long I, I might have been like more prepared but i just was like <laughs> i don't know i was just like each interview was just kind of like sorry i'm you know kind of mm. just I, I don't know what to think right now but yeah. you know i uh every album that we've done has a pretty like personal aspect this was just the one that it was the most uh upfront about it Right. And I think like going into it and like once we reached the point where like for the songs that I wrote for the record, like I knew that this was something that I was going to be talking to people about. I just kind of like prepared myself okay. yeah. <laughs> ahead of time as much as I could, you know? I mean, yeah. It's, it's not personal. You know, it's yeah. An and yeah, and we're not we're not going to go too much into it, obviously, because you you talked about it so much. But um, but yeah, it's I was just curious about that because it's uh, this is what I've been sort of when I've been researching uh, about the album, and uh, this is what I'm finding a lot of is that it's the most personal, personally written record, and it's about so much. And I was just curious how that with the pandemic going on, and just a lot of very overwhelming, I, I would say at this point. So yeah. Um, so there is a tour coming up, like you mentioned earlier, um, are there, is there any like upcoming plans for any streams, any live streams? So, Cause you guys are very quiet. So like on the social media aspect, do you have any live streams coming up? Like to, to, to kind of keep us entertained? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, uh, we, we talked about it, but I mean, it. I'm sure that like most people that follow us by now know that we don't live in the same places. So, I mean, oh. uh, yeah, I mean, I, I live in New York City and right. the other guys live in in Arkansas and the the travel and logistics of getting like a crew together to do the live stream mm -hmm. like we we discussed the possibilities about it around the time that the record was coming out but i mean it just it didn't make sense and i mean it like i think it, even if we had had it scheduled we would have had to have canceled because the the pandemic numbers like spiked so badly and especially in the south i mean it's just been like kind of like up and down like this it got really bad in the south and mm -hmm. then it got really bad here again mm -hmm. and i I, everybody has just kind of been like, you know, is it worth <laughs> like doing it like a live stream? If so, right. you know, if we end up having to like hire a crew and like people are traveling to do this, somebody gets sick, you know, I don't know. It's just like, 
we ended up kind of being like, you know, maybe if maybe if it pans out like before uh, before we go on tour again. But I don't know. It's it's really not ended up being a priority for us. And, and I'm sorry, like for anybody <laughs> out there who has been hoping that we would do it. But I mean, it for us. I mean, like I think longevity is is key here. Like we've we've been road dogs for a long time, and we want to keep being able to do that. Of course, rather than like risk it for one like virtual show Not worth it it's better yeah. to yeah better to like be able to keep doing this for as long as we want to in the future if we can you know so you will you will yeah yeah mm -hmm. positive thinking you will or the vaccines are out so hopefully i know i know in the states they're they're moving quickly with them so uh hopefully that'll happen for you guys yeah uh, i hope so yeah. what do you get it tomorrow if i could <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same here. I mean, we're, I'm last on the list, so we, it's it's going to take time. But uh, I'm to get I'm getting it for sure. I, I miss shows. I want to travel. So, yeah. um, what is your what is your intake on the new like live stream culture? Like, are you have you been checking any of them out? Like, do you think this is something that's going to be like a new thing going forward, even when life is back to normal? I think it's cool, but I I honestly I. I don't think like in any capacity it's ever going to replace real mm -hmm. shows. I, mm -hmm. I, I've watched a few that I've, I've liked quite a bit, but okay. I, I don't get the sense that anybody is like, Oh, fuck it. I'm never going to a show again. You know, no. <laughs> like I got to sit on my couch. Like, you know, it's, I mean, it's cool. And I, mm -hmm. I know that, uh, you know, as, certainly as like something that's kind of a stopgap. I, I don't know. I, I just, I haven't like gotten the notion from like anybody out there amongst my friends who are musicians or people that are just buddies with or anything that they're like really, really excited about the live stream thing, like yeah. going forward. I think that like, I'm sure bands will continue to do it here and there. And it, it works well for like solo artists, I think right. maybe, maybe better than, than for, or, you know, it's stuff that's like not, kind of in the heavy music scene or something. I think it's like something that will probably still continue to be a thing for people who do experimental music or whatever, like. Um, yeah, like Twitch thing and yeah. 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 And that, that stuff is really cool. The capability, I mean, it's been a, a, a kind of like cool learning curve trying to figure out how to, <laughs> how to be like, figure out all these <laughs> different like mechanisms for, for reaching people right like over the past year like uh i don't know it i think that uh it'll have its place but right. I, I i i definitely don't think i mean i remember like at the beginning of the pandemic like there was this thing of like people being like i, I at least me seeing like some like clickbait headlines that were like live streams will replace <laughs> yes. live music going forward like who who would bother to like go to a sweaty dive bar to to see would, a, see a band when yeah. you can enjoy them from the comfort of your own living room? I'm like, dude, that's bullshit. <laughs> like, <It's> terrible. <laughs> I mean, there's a cool. A friend of mine had a cool idea where we could do both. Like, we could have the live stream going on at the venue if yeah. for people that can't make the show if they're if they're sick with covid or something and they they bought their ticket and they can't go or something like that that can be cool because yeah. now we have the right gear and everything for it and now we have the right setup so we can charge like an, an extra fee for people who rather stay home and watch the show which i agree like i i don't see that being like a, a majority um i like being in crowds i like being at i like live music versus yeah. sitting on couch so uh, and many of us do but yeah i thought you know that could be kind of a cool thing a cool option even for bands like it's just going to help make them support them more if they we sell extra tickets at home too yeah that's definitely a good idea i think it'll I, I really do think that it will continue to have some like some sort of like piece of the, of the pie i guess but i uh, yeah i just it, I, I definitely don't think that like oh, there's just not going to be as many live shows anymore. Like once everything, once enough people are vaccinated and there's like the possibility yeah. of having people like in indoor spaces 
in that yeah. sort of capacity again. Absolutely. Is, have there been any like live streams that you like you checked out in particular that really stood out that you really enjoyed? Like what live streams have you been watching? I watched the Baroness live stream. Nice. Uh, mm -hmm. That one was great. I'm, I'm trying to remember what else. I hmm. I know I uh, I ended up watching one or two other ones, but that's that was the one that really stood out to me. So nice. When was that one? I, I might have missed that one. That was... one. Was... <laughs> well. That's a good question. Yeah, I can't, <laughs> Some, I can't sometime realize. in the last like one thousand years, is what it feels like. <laughs> but uh, I think yeah. it was like in a, maybe in November. Uh, okay, I missed it. I don't know. It. it was it was last fall sometime. Okay, okay, yeah. I've been checking. I've been checking out live streams here and there, but it's definitely um, it's a little disappointing when it's pre-recorded. I prefer to see it live, live. Um, but but I understand like sometimes they have to pre-record because like you know maybe they're in the same situation as you guys, where like everybody's separate and they have to like do one big recording in one shot and, yeah. and so on. But um, I do. Uh, it is it is definitely very very different. Um, and uh, I mean, this is the best we have right now. So gotta make do with it and support music as much as we can so yeah but it's it's definitely weird um so what have what are your favorite now, now that you have all this like extra time what are your favorite pastimes during this break from crazy music worlds like what are you what are you netflix what are you watching on netflix like are you cooking more like what are what have you been doing i think that the biggest new thing that i've gotten like obsessed with since last year is I got really into cycling. Like oh, cool. Really, really into cycling. So, nice. and I, I hadn't owned a bike in a really long time and I ended up like, I ended up buying one around the time when there, there was the bike shortage. Okay. Like, uh, last spring I, I ended up like buying one off, uh, just like off Craigslist. Um, like a in my neighborhood. Or like, uh, I, I mean, I, I didn't go too big on it. I like I, I bought one that I thought would be like be usable. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just uh, even even this winter. I mean, I, I pretty much like cycle every day unless it's like Amazing. pouring down rain or something. So okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's been the biggest thing for me. Um, not not as much on the cooking front as some people. I think. Uh, I don't know. At, at, at the beginning, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, like, it's time for me to, like, really step up my game on this. But it, it got old really fast. So. Right. Uh, well, we're usually on the road all the time. Like, it's, yeah. you know, for, you have all this extra time now at home. So the cycling thing is definitely is great. But uh, are you, um, like, are you watching anything now or any, like, with all this, you have so much time. Like, I'm sure you're writing a lot or writing a lot of music. But are you writing a lot of music? Like, are you writing any new music now for, for Paul? It, uh, it, it like it hasn't really <laughs> been any different than any other time. Like the the creativity like comes in waves, kind of. Like I'll like I'll like write a bunch of music. Mm -hmm. I'll have like a stretch where I'm just like really like I'm just like on it, and like it's just like all like happening really quickly, and then I'll have like you know, like sometimes like months of like nothing really major, which is really fucking annoying because like usually that's been, that time has been taken up by touring. So like, right. yeah. I can, you know, like, I don't know. I don't have to worry about like not being like that, like prolific. Right. Because I'll be like, all right, well, we're touring like six months out of this year, you know, like I don't have to like think about like being super creative right now. My focus right. right now is on the performance. Yeah. And uh so like that being out of the picture and still kind of having this thing where it's like, well yeah, I'll have like a few weeks where I'm like really just like, man, I'm coming up with like so much stuff and I'm like really excited about it. And then there'll be like mm -hmm. followed by like a month and a half of just like nothing really. And it's like <laughs> it's really depressing kind of because it's just like there's nothing else going on and I I like feel like I should be like staying busy and like I I would yeah. like to be more disciplined about you know like 
my creative process. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> it's that's, that's a very, that's a very but, common uh, thing. A lot of people are like, I have to be creative now. I have this time. And like, it's, there's so much pressure and, and it's, it's, it's not, you know, necessary. Like if you just want to chill, chill, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's okay. Um, it's, and, and in terms just, of like I, your other question about like the TV stuff, like Netflix or whatever, right? Uh, and, I have seen some some series that I really liked. It's, a lot of them have been on uh, HBO Max, like since they launched. Okay. That there's a there's a series called Raised by Wolves. Oh, I heard of that one. That's really really good. Okay. Uh, also, recently, uh, there's a show. It's almost ten years old now. There's a show called The Nick. Okay. That has Clive Owen in it. And it's like he's a he's a like really brilliant surgeon mm -hmm. working at a, a hospital in New York city in like 1900 or something like that. I mean, he's addicted to cocaine and opium. Okay. And I, I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's a really good, <laughs> very like, I, it's just like a really well done period piece. I think. Nice. Uh, I had seen it initially when we were, I had seen a few episodes of it when we were on tour with Paradise Lost okay. a few years ago and had never gotten to finish the series because it was on like a kind of like obscure service or something. And I like, I nowadays I don't, <laughs> I don't really like even bother with trying to like torrent anything or. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I, I'm just like, eh, I, yeah. I, there's so much stuff I'm not going to bother like trying to like track down mm -hmm. something like online. So yeah, it finally is available to stream on HBO. So I've been, I've been going back and rewatching that, which has been pretty awesome. I've, I started watching American gods. Well, I'm, I'm caught up now. I don't know if you've heard of that one. Yeah. It, I, I've actually, uh, I haven't seen the, the newest episodes cause they didn't, they start season three. They did. I've uh, seen everything prior to the brand new season that's happening right now. Okay. So are you also, cause I started, I actually started the series like a month ago and now I'm caught up. Um, but everyone warned me that season two is really crap next and season three is even worse. Do you feel that? Cause I, I kind of felt that watching it. Season one is incredible, but then it does kind of go downhill a little bit. Yeah. I, yeah. My enthusiasm for it definitely <laughs> kind of fell yeah. off after after season one. When I started watching season two, it was obvious. I mean, I, I think the like the showrunner left. Yeah, the showrunner. Uh, yeah, it, it didn't really seem like the same show anymore. But no. I'll still, I'm sure I'll still watch the newest season. Like once it's done, I'm not. Yeah. This is the problem. Like, there's so many fucking streaming <laughs> services now that I like. I don't want to sign up for any more. I already have like too many. Oh, I, I know. Have like, I have like like four different ones, and I'm like, what? I can like barely find anything to watch half the time. So. Oh, I know. You spend like most of your time browsing. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we asked this question to to all of our victims uh, in our interviews. So what what is left on your bucket list or the Paul Bearer bucket list? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> On the Paul Bear bucket list, we still haven't played in mainland Asia yet. That's mm -hmm. we played, and we haven't played in South America. Uh, those are two places that uh, I, I hope to get to to go still. Okay. Before uh, before like all this happened, it definitely seemed like that was <laughs> like mm -hmm. like close on the on the agenda, but you know. I think that like touring is going to be a little different. Yeah, for a while at least. But um, apart from that, I don't know. Uh, I mean, we've always hoped that we would get to to open for Metallica <laughs> at some point. Because <laughs> I mean, like, I, I mean, you. like, uh, James Hetfield a few years back, like, put a Paul Bearer song on mm -hmm. the Spotify playlist that he that uh or somebody on their like management team or something like put up <laughs> and uh at some point in time there was some other communication from somebody like on their team mm -hmm. to our management about something that it not about us <laughs> opening for okay. them or anything but we've all always been like oh my god like 
maybe <laughs> maybe it'll finally happen. But, uh, I see nothing. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, as far as I know, like they just have a comedian open for them <laughs> nowadays. So oh. seriously, like they like the last tour they did, they just had for whatever reason it was just a comedian and then Metallica. Wow. So oh. I don't even know if they like bring a band on on tour with them anymore. So well, I've only I've seen Metallica like weirdly enough when it should have been a lot more, but I've only seen them twice, and it was in the last like five verse five ish years. Um, and they don't come to Montreal very often. Um, and and they I'm trying I saw them at Heavy Montreal um, mm -hmm. in 2014, and then again uh, like a few years ago. And I don't remember them having a comedian, but yeah, I guess <laughs> probably like, not at a festival. Yeah, but... not not at the festival, but yeah. like. I, when I saw them solo, like yeah. I, yeah, so it was just it was just like the last the last tour that they did that wasn't yeah uh, that wasn't like festival dates and stuff because mm. when we when we toured with Gojira yeah a few years back our shows opening for them were their off dates opening for Metallica or they were ah. like and then like after that mm -hmm. the next tour that Metallica did it was like Jim Gaffigan opening for them or something like that it was like right. totally the like opposite end of the spectrum so huh. i don't know Thing. i i really i i'm like constantly I'm like okay. <laughs> entranced by the decision making of, <laughs> yeah, of the metallica odd. camp yeah yeah not gonna lie that's that's a little odd hopefully you guys will make it and uh keep my fingers crossed um so i have a few like more like fun ish kind of questions for you now um so where would each member of paul bear be in a human centipede oh my god I don't... <laughs> wow i mean I, I don't even really like know how to like parse that out other than like whoever is like the, the first one and the last one <laughs> uh like, do yeah. you take all the shit? Are you at the end? Or are you at the beginning? Who gives the shit to everyone and tells everyone what to do? I don't know. I, I feel like I, I would probably be, like, somehow, like, swapping out from, like, the... <laughs> yeah, so. I, like, I'm, I'm, like, I, I can definitely be, like, a little bit of the taskmaster sometimes. Like, sometimes it, the other guys call me the band dad, so... Oh, know, if that means... <laughs> yeah, the band dad is probably the one that takes all the shit. Yeah, but You're but sometimes I like, I mean that's the thing though. Sometimes I'm like kind of kind of cracking down on him about stuff. So I don't so know. So you in the which is the worst part? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm probably the caboose. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, if you had to make your own pedal, what would it be called, and what sound would it make? Oh man. Uh, I would make a pedal called the Chronolith. <laughs> Ooh. And uh, I would want it to make a sound called the black note, which is like the brown note, but instead of uh, instead of it like making you shit your pants, it just like extinguishes all life in the universe. So <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't really be a sound because like everything would cease to I love exist. It. I love it. Very wizard, wizard like. Um, if you had the opportunity to be in Pink Floyd's movie The Wall, which character would you be and why? I haven't watched that in so long that I only remember that Pink is right. the is is the like the main one. Yeah, I remember the main. I mean, I remember Pink, and then I remember the like the hammer guys on it. It's been. It's been yeah. so many years since I've watched that. Okay. I can't even answer the question. I haven't <laughs> watched it in like, it's probably been like 20 years. Oh, wow. So. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's been, it's been a while. Okay. That was a bad question then. Oops. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. But that was my last one. Um, so I am leaving it now to the watchers. If they have any questions, if you guys have any questions for Joe, now is your chance to ask away. Um, Chron oh, there's a comment here. Chronolith is a stoner band from Montreal. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah. Uh, it's true, Chris. Wow. Yes. Yeah, I totally didn't even think of that. Um, that's funny. Um, 
yeah, if anybody has any questions, we're here. In the meantime, I'm just going to do a little bit of promo here because next week we are going to be interviewing AJ from uh, Fire from the Gods. Uh, which we're really excited about. And then we're going to be taking a little bit of a break after that. And we will be back in April with more live Q and A's. Uh, we are here again with Joe of Paul Bear. If you guys have any questions at all, now's your chance. Otherwise uh, we will uh, call it for the night. So um, while we're waiting, once again, Joe, thank you so much for taking the time today. Yep. Uh, wish you the best. I hope to see you guys play Montreal again soon or I have a chance to see you in another city so I can travel again <laughs> and you guys can travel and open for Metallica or whatever you need to <laughs> um, I really wish you guys the best of luck and uh, okay so we have a question uh, okay so there's some comments and questions so Talia okay. says not a question but please 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 come back to Montreal ASAP I totally agree um, I love I, Montreal I, I can't I can't oh. wait to come back that's nice. Well, maybe we'll do an interview in person at that point and we can, awesome. we can do some fun stuff. Um, and next question from Chris, most expensive piece of equipment in the room you're sitting in. And that's a great, Oh, like, is oh this man. Uh, yeah. Okay. Probably, <laughs> probably the most expensive thing, like single item is back. I don't, it's, you may not be able to like see back there, but there's a, uh, Oh, I don't know. There's, there's a few things in the rack that's kind of like hidden behind. Uh, oh yeah, some of the stuff. There's there's a few multi thousand dollar <laughs> pieces in there. There's nothing that's there's nothing that costs like over three thousand dollars as one item in this room. But <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of a lot of expensive stuff in here. Oh my goodness, yeah. Because I was curious. You have a lot of you have you have a lot of gear there. Um, next question. So yes, I was actually going to ask ask about Aronofsky, but word has it that you're a Darren Aronofsky fan. Which member of Paul Bearer would you recreate the ass to ass scene from Requiem with? <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> uh, I would do it with Devin. <laughs> that scene is so disturbing. Why bring that up? Aronofsky <laughs> is traumatizing. This man will. I, he, oof. I'm like. Just, just for the record, I love Aronofsky, but I'm Me like, too. I'm more into like the cosmic Aronofsky and less of the like intense, like <laughs> existential crisis Aronofsky. Have you seen? I recently watched Mother. Like, yeah. Oh god! So many people hated that movie. But I, I really loved that movie. I've really? only seen it once, though. I, okay. I, I watched it in the theater, and I haven't watched it again. So. Oh god! You saw it in theaters? That's even. Yeah. I, I watched it uh, about six months ago. And it traumatized the shit out of me. I I never want to watch it or think of it again. It's really just so disturbing. Yeah, and so so many people hated it. I I really <laughs> yeah, really love it. I need to I watch it again. It. Yeah, I hate it. It's, it's like actually hard. like yeah. I just based on the the single viewing that I had, it was actually like up there as like nothing will ever be as good as the fountain of his. Story, yeah, that's but, yeah. I, I read uh, somewhere favorite and it's a, that's a great movie absolutely yeah. yeah but uh no i i really enjoyed it i actually thought it was like his best movie in a while wow so. okay again it's not i appreciate it but um it's he he really gets in your head aronofsky he likes to mess with your head and it's just that movie really did it for me um Chris says pie or mother. We already were discussing mother, but pie is a good one. I love pie. That's, that's a great film. Pie yeah. is really good. I mean, it's, it's like almost, there's like a an intense, like paranoia element yeah. about pie, but I, I don't know. There was something like a little more psychedelic about mother. I thought compared to pie pie is just like, it, it seems like essentially like a movie that like it's made by somebody that's on bed. <laughs> oh yeah. So, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, whereas like mother was like a little more Symbolic. And, and it was like a little more like philosophical, I think. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's still a bad trip that like you're actually, you're on like psychedelics and you're like yeah. exploring a little bit more than, than pie. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, any other questions, watchers? Otherwise, we will uh, call it a night. Um, some comments. Yeah. Jacques, dude, the fuck. 
Yeah, that's uh, Jason. That's a very great question. Um, okay, cool. I think we're good. Um, so once again, thank you for uh, for for joining us tonight. Did you want to yeah. do like? Did you want to plug anything? Promote anything? Last minute here. Uh, just next time we play in Montreal, hope to see uh, <laughs> hope to see some people out there crossing. I here. I really just I I will say this. Fucking love playing in Montreal. When we oh. played it. When we played at heavy heavy MTL last time, mm. and the first time, they, mm. they were both like very uh, near and dear <laughs> to our uh, to our hearts. So, oh yeah, that's nice. You guys were awesome. I remember those performances. I've seen you guys a million times. So. The first one was very very drunk. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> we were. Uh, it was one of those. I mean, it, this was like still like in the point in time where we were kind of like getting our sea legs. I think for like playing during the day oh yeah so so we uh i at least like speaking for myself i was like trying to get hammered before <laughs> at, i think we played at like 3 30 or 4 in the afternoon yep. or something was I was like i'm gonna like try to get as smash as i can oh like, wow before before we go on stage I, it was i i know it was like a, a pretty like wild <laughs> wild from a quality standpoint, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was, there, there was some, like, it was super hot that day. I remember. Yeah. yeah. It was really hot. We had mm. a like hilarious encounter with Phil Anselmo backstage. And yeah, the, it was a, what it was a memorable encounter? one for sure. What, ha what happened uh, during that encounter? He like chased after me for some reason and <laughs> said he was gonna he was gonna poke my eye out. And then later he ended up like hanging out with us by our like weird little like trailer that everybody all the artists were in these like little little trailers and like right. he was really drunk. <laughs> and oh, we were wow. really drunk. And he was saying some kind of hilarious stuff that I won't repeat here. So Of course. No worries. <laughs> Uh, and you guys, you guys get nice and spoiled in the artist world at Heavy Montreal. It's really nice how they set everything yeah. up for artists and like you guys have all the food and the drinks. The food, the food is truly like second to none. Right. It's it's the best food of like any festival that we've ever played anywhere in the world. For real. Oh, wow. <laughs> like that, it's fucking cool. amazing. Oh, cool. That's good to hear. I really hope we can have another Heavy MTL soon. Um, yeah. because not soon. I mean, it's not going to be for, for, for a bit, but we didn't, we weren't going to have one last year. So hopefully we will have one at some point again. So yeah, it's good times. We really miss it. Being drunk is cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, thanks again. I'll say thank yeah. you for the of time. Um, could not thank you enough. And uh, last call for questions, guys. I'll give you like a, like 30 seconds and then we will call it a night. And uh, yeah, so uh, Talia says we love you too. See, seeing you guys in a small club is so trippy too. Love it. Yeah, the, the small club I kind of, I, I prefer over the festival to see you guys. I think it's like, it's, it's you can oh, get yeah. I mean, I love it all anywhere, but like it's, I saw you guys last at, at Cafe Campus here. So it was, it was a really, really good show. Um, and I remember it like very, very well. I don't remember when it was because I don't know what time it is right now, but I remember the show itself. Um, okay, cool. So thanks again. And I yep. uh, hope you have a great rest of your night and hope to see you soon. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks.